Where do I begin to tell the story of how great love can be? The sweet love story that is older than the sea. The simple truth about the love he brings to me. Um, this is a video about comic books. Uh, because Ziploc Gory and some other people on YouTube who do um, comic book related videos uh, started this thing where they talked about um, what comic books mean to them uh, and I I had a realization about why I started to read comic books and I'm both frightened and exhilarated by this uh, realization because um, it wasn't supposed to happen because I'm from Romania and over here there is no comic book culture to speak of there are no comic book stores um, comic books in general are considered more of a political sat satirical thing Superhero comics are, are, as a concept, is completely foreign to most people in Romania. They know they exist, uh, but comic books in general are not uh, considered an art form or a medium of itself. So how I got into comics, it's such... It's, this is going to sound so stupid, but bear with me. So I was 17 years old, and um, I just got internet uh, put into my house, so I had uh, access to internet every day. Um, and uh, I stumbled on something one day when I was using um, a certain sharing program for people to share stuff on the internet. You know, people do that. Um, and I stumbled on this thing which was a comic book scan of a comic book Batman vs. Spawn. Um, I knew who Spawn was because I saw the movie and obviously I knew who Batman was. Um, and I read it, and it was just... Of course, Batman throwing a batarang into Spawn's forehead was like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my 17 years of life. But it was also this realization that there are people who scan comics and they place them online. And for somebody who had zero access to comic books, it was wow! And that got me thinking that, you know, if somebody could scan something like Batman vs. Spawn, which, let's face it, is not the most popular comic book ever. Uh, maybe they are scanning other stuff, specifically X-Men comics, because I remembered I used to watch the X-Men cartoon, um, and I really liked Gambit, and I really liked Gambit and Rogue together. Ah! So I started uh, tracking down each and every single issue of X-Men and Unca Uncanny X-Men, where Gambit and Rogue were together. And then I discovered that there's there's that issue where Gambit and Rogue uh, make love for the first time, and then there's that issue where she leaves him in Antarctica, and then there's that issue where Gambit amplifies his power so he can touch Rogue, and then there's that issue where they get stabbed together, and it was from this little thing that was on television, you know, where they had this flirty kind of thing, it turned into this huge romantic epic tragedy thing, and it was all in comic books, and I couldn't believe how much stuff, uh, how much history they actually had, and how much thing, how many, how, it was just, wow! But I still wasn't into comic books per se, because I didn't read anything that didn't involve Gambit and Rogue. But then, this was around the time when uh, the Justice League of America cartoon was out, um, and I watched an episode on TV where Wonder Woman gives Batman a peck on the cheek. Um, I think it was an episode like in the second season, the gorilla episode. And the thing is, I was looking online for a, for that particular clip where Wonder Woman gives him a peck on the cheek, but I stumbled upon this review of a comic book issue where it said that uh, in that issue, Batman and Wonder Woman make out. I needed to read that shit! I needed to find it! Batman and Wonder Woman making out! Oh my god! So that got me into reading the Obsidian Age story arc from the Justice League of America comic series. Um, I think it was like issues 88 to 90 for 90 something. Um, and after that I kept reading for a while uh, and because there were characters there that I didn't know I started backtracking and reading things that were leading up to the, to the Obsidian Age. Um, and from that it was like there was this character Kyle Rayner in uh, the Justice League, which I really liked, and I started to read his stuff, and The Flash was Wally West, and I was like, but I knew The Flash was Barry Allen, so I started reading The Flash comic book at that time, um, and after that I was on 
the sp superhero hype boards and I read that Deadpool is the su funniest superhero ever. So I started reading Deadpool comics. And from that it just snowballed into reading lots and lots of comics. But in all actuality it just started with me just wanting to see Gambit and Rogue and Batman and Wonder Woman making out. Uh, and as for the matter of what comic books mean to me today, uh, I don't read as many as I used to. DC has really disappointed me in these last years. Uh, there's certain... I still keep track of Green Lantern comics, I still read Deadpool, but that's about it, honestly, outside of the occasional graphic novel. Uh, but I think that because I read so many comics at a time in my life when I was just developing my um, level of taste, I think that definitely influenced how I see stories and storytelling in general because, uh, you know, comics have this great way of um, exposing you to a variety of storytelling methods and styles because, you know, in an hour you can read 10 comics and each more different than uh, the other much in the same way you know you can see 10 short films in an hour and each is different in its own way um, and comic books are great at kind of exposing you to a lot of stuff so um, today I can I can say that it helped me refine my critical sense because I read so many um, when I was right at that critical point of my taste level developing I really I think I have a lot to draw on today when I review movies and TV shows because I know that there are great stories, engaging stories out there um, and I can only hope that I, I watch a movie that will be just half as good as a graphic novel or a comic book story-wise. 